On today's show, we again dig into our archives and go back to 2015, where we head to the Perth Motorplex in Western Australia and look back on the 44th running of the Andro Western Nationals, featuring Top Alcohol and Top Door Slammer. Then we wind forward a few years to 2018 and head east to Sydney Motorsport Park as we look back on some of the tyre frying sideways action from the Garrett International Drifting Cup as part of the Yokohama World Time Attack Challenge. This is Speed Week. Losing isn't a word that 16-time top alcohol national champ Gary Phillips quite understands. But in 2014, the titan of top alcohol was dealt a killer blow by his season-long nemesis, Stephen Ham. Here we go. And that is not a bad way to start it. It's the perfect way to start it, and he'll win the championship. A 564 whole shot win. Perfect light, perfect pass, incredible. Triple zero. I don't think I've ever seen that done in top alcohol before. Steve Ham has pulled it out of the bag. Gary Phillips watching on in the background. He's one thousandth of a second away from giving the championship over to Gary Phillips. Phillips is now back to claim his rightful crown. And this weekend marks the beginning of his quest. But to be the best, you have to beat the best with stalwarts and rookies alike lining him up. He'll have to give it everything he's got. There's some good cars out there now. I mean, you know, we went 546 three years ago, whatever it was. Uh, everyone's sort of caught up and it's time to try and go to the next step. Yeah. He's the best out there. Uh, he's the best there is. He's done it a long time and he's a good competitor. We race well and it's always really competitive racing when we race against each other. Hell of a lot of competition here, you know. Four doors down, I've got Gary Phillips, 17-time champion, with the world champion here tuning him in Steve Harker. But then you know there's John Canooley, Rob Pilkington, Aaron Deary, Shane Weston, the new young gun. Pick a number out of 10 cars, there's 10 winners in that field. I don't really worry about who's in the other line. I give him one chance and that, you know, anything other than that, or too bad. The Perth Motorplex, the home of the biggest event in WA drag racing, the Western Nationals. And it wouldn't be the Western Nats without Top Door Slammer, although Top Alcohol also joining the card here this year, replacing Top Fuel from last summer. I've got Rusty Gregory alongside me. This is one of the best door slammer rounds of the year. It is, and the conditions do a lot to contribute to that. It really is the jewel in the crown of West Australian drag racing when it comes to these blown alcohol sedans, and I'm really looking forward to this race meeting today. Very much looking forward to this eliminations battle in top alcohol. There is a gold Christmas tree up for grabs for whoever can win all three of their eliminations races. But first, let's check out how we got to this point. Highlights of qualifying thanks to Crow Cams tonight. First of three sessions and Stephen Del Caro on the far side of the racetrack. He would actually make the field with a 6.45. He had to consider himself pretty lucky to do that, but unfortunately, the bad news was, looked like he did a fair bit of engine damage on the way. Yeah, a lot of smoke coming out of that car. Shane Weston, our top qualifier from last year, 10.31 this time around, did not race again for the rest of the event. That was the big, big story of qualifying. Aaron Deary, a 5.95, a lot slower than what we expected from him, but still gets him into the field. Looks like Canuli was just rolling the beams there. Unfortunate red light, cost him some ET as well. 5.47 though on the other lane for Gary Phillips and Canuli rolling the beams to a 5.66. Shows a lot of potential conditions for the 8 p.m. session. The Fable 8 p.m. session, always good. And uh, Pilkington, a former main event winner at the Motorplex, running a 5.61, a proven conditions are good. Yeah, and a 5.61 not that long ago was a fantastic run. These days it's about two tenths of a second off the pace. Robert Amoroso would be the other guy who would not qualify tonight. So only two people not making the cut. And in the other lane, Debbie O'Rourke made the trip over from Queensland to their former home state, running a nice 5.65. John Canula now 5.58 on this pass. But for me, the story was Gary Phillips picking up that front end at half track. Just shows you this track has got plenty of teeth in it the whole way down the racetrack. And a 5.57 alongside a 5.58, always a very nice side-by-side -side pass. And one of the quickest we've seen at the Motorplex. And uh, this guy's going to be one to watch, Craig Glasby. 
creeping up very nicely inside the 550s. He goes 558 on that pass. Aaron Deary still not to see the best out of him just yet. 590s, uh, pretty much where he's stuck at the minute. And Anthony Begley, another car that we know can run quick. 594 was his best run of qualifying. Good enough to get him into the field, but he's down there in the bottom half, which means he's going to have a tough first round matchup. As a matter of fact, he'll have the toughest of first round matchups just about as well. Uh, John Canuli, just off the back of a trip to America. Stephen Del Caro, he's drawn definitely the short straw this weekend. He'll have the hard charge in Gary Phillips, but that is your top order right there. And uh, 10 cars showing up in Perth. Only eight can make it through to race day. The Crocans Pit Report here at the Western Nationals. Top alcohol featuring for the first time and Gary Phillips number one with a 547 last night. That's seven in the top eight now in the history. Well done. Yeah, thanks. Oh, we must be trying, eh? <laughs> Take us through it. Oh, yeah, it was, a, you know, it was a good run. It was sort of, I had lane choice, you know, first pick, and I couldn't win a bet again. I put my hand in the bucket and pulled out left lane, and I thought, oh, this would be interesting. So, anyhow, we had a go at it. You know, we had a had a look at the lane and sort of used a bit of the Darwin deal. It went 46 up there, and, um, yeah, and Shane got into me because uh, I actually shoved off at 5.3 on that run, so it was, it was a pretty good run. And it, it ran 213 something, 213.4 or 5 to half track, which is that's as pretty as pretty much as fast as it'll go, you know. So Gary Phillips looking the goods going forward to race day. Stephen Hamm, the man who won last year's championship away in the USA, so won't be posing any threat at round one. Still got plenty more talent in this field. Here's how they'll line up. And uh, I like the look of Canuli and Begley. That's going to be one good one to watch. Phillips and Ambrosi now. So Ambrosi's been bumped into the field courtesy of Stephen Del Caro going out. Let's find out a bit more with Matt. Well, that's one of the marquee matchups reverses up on track here at the 44th Western Nationals. I'm talking about this guy behind me, Rob Ambrosi, who qualified in the field after Stephen Del Caro blew the engine to pieces last night. He hasn't been here for 12 seasons at the Perth Motorplex. He's going to take on Gary Phillips. It's a hard task, but he may just upset the 17-time champ. Phillips has been known to uh, cop a couple of first-round losses when you least expect it. That's a cool shot. Big screen in the background. 44 Western Nationals eliminations are finally go. Good crowd as always is expected for the Western Nats. And on track now, Craig Glasby, a guy who a lot of people have picked as a dark horse this weekend. He made a pretty good run in qualifying. Qualified number three in the field with a 558. There's a lot of people saying that this guy's got the potential to run in the 40s this weekend, which means for Aaron Deary, that's going to be a very, very hard first round matchup. For this guy, who does a lot of crew chief work and tuning for the likes of Pino Priolo and some other guys in the pits, he's been away from the driving side of the sport for a while, but uh, maybe five, six years ago was running 550s pretty consistently. He and Wayne Newby were the two quickest guys as we ride on board now with our chief starter picking up the all-important switch which starts these 3,000-plus horsepower beasts to go down the quarter mile. Of course, superchargers, blown alcohol combinations, always very popular over here in the West. And with a pair of West Aussies on the start line now, it means that the local crowd will see one of their favourites going through to the semi-finals. Who it will be, we'll find out shortly. advantage and that's where it ended and goodness me 545 second quickest driver in Australia now is Glasby and there is Deary smoking the tires the headlines are in the other lane in an emphatic style 545 I am absolutely awestruck he had to do some driving on this run too that thing moved around big time just before half track and a 545 that puts him up in the realms of one of the quickest alcohol funny cars in the world that's incredible. Wow. Well, that is both something to think about for Gary Phillips and also quite encouraging because he knows that the lane that he's in right now is good for lane choice. Well, Gary, Gary Phillips would have been sitting there absolutely licking his chops when he saw that run go down because he would know how good this track is. He knows there's a little bit of cloud cover today. means they can make lots of horsepower with it. And if the track's there, they're able to throw that horsepower at the racing surface. You're going to see some quick times from all the big guys, guys like Canuli, guys like Gary Phillips, and guys like Craig Glasby. 
unseasonably cooler over in the west so far this weekend. Bit of storm action going around and it's a little bit overcast. There is a great shot. That's the two buttons which he changes the gears with. He's pulling on the brake. Down comes the roof flap where he gets out. I thought it didn't rain in Perth, Chad. Never does. But occasionally, just occasionally it does. One thing, though, that is so good about this weather being a bit cooler is it means that the 6 p.m. session is a bit more racy. That's why we're seeing some better ETs. Number one qualifier now. The man who wants to get that championship back. Gee, Phillips gave him a head start and he chased him down with a 44. Alcohol is on point this weekend. Ambrosi will find the trailer after being smoked by one of Gary Phillips' best ever runs. Wow. And that, that, that thing was just like driving a Cadillac down the middle of the racetrack. He barely moved the steering wheel. Ambrosi tattooed him to the tree. But a 44, Gary Phillips says, hey, Craig, I'll take a 45 and I'll raise you. Wow. OK. What's Canuli got? That's the man. And we don't really know what to expect right now. Do we dare say it? Do we dare say that 30s may be on the table this weekend? Well, traditionally, the 6 p.m. session, which is this one right now, isn't as good as the following one. The semi-finals are usually where the big passes come. We saw that in qualifying last night. It is nice and cool right now, but, uh, man, that is extraordinary. And if the conditions continue to get a little bit better and the air gets a bit cooler, then maybe the 30s aren't completely out of the question. Crazy thought. Here's Anthony Begley. We can't really rule out him either. He's a guy who's got all the good gear. He's got a very smart young tuner on board with James Rowland, who does a lot of tuning for a lot of different guys these days. And uh, he's got all the potential to run right there with those cars running in the 50s and the 40s, maybe even, as you touched on, the 30s. It's quite incredible to think coming into this event, we, we said, OK, maybe the national record might get a little bit of a nudge. Well, we're right on it right now with a 44 from Phillips. My mouth is absolutely watering this prospect. So the Doodoo -doo Funny car has made its return. This is the first time that we've seen Canuli back in action. Look at those eyes after his trip to America. What's he learned? 50s in qualifying. What's he got in elimination? Can he join the 40 club? And we're seeing some hit and miss reaction times, and he does. 5.49 for Canuli. This has got to be one of the best ever first rounds I can remember. Big, big speed as well, 419 kilometres per hour. He had to do some driving, that thing got over near the wall. You can see just how violent it is inside these cars. There's a lot going on in a very short period of time. John Canulli, one of the best drivers in the business. I think he actually even pedaled that car uh, just past the 60 foot time. So 49, that's a great run for him. Wow, three 540s in a row. Hats off to the Motorplex staff on this racetrack. Rob Pilkington now, his son has recently been licensing in this car as well, which is encouraging news. Always like to see second generation drivers coming through and taking the wheel off dad. Pilkington's going to be lining up alongside one of Australia's fastest ladies, Debbie O'Rourke. Let's find out a bit more about her with Matt Nolte. Debbie O'Rourke, tell us about one of your greatest achievements. Oh, well, I guess I've got a few, but, um, you know, last night we'd probably have to top it, top it off from a drag racing point of view. Um, you know, running it out the back door and running the 65, the 565 has been the, the uh, you know, basically the pinnacle of um, what I've done to date. Having said that, I did actually run a um, small block Chev to a world record. So, um, and that was probably 15 years ago. So it's, you know, it's been exciting. She's had a decorated career since the old days of running that Tirana at uh, Ravenswood Raceway. There she is in a category where we have seen plenty of women succeed before. Yeah, we have. We've even seen it go down to championships almost with Debbie Reed not that long ago in the drags that came within one round of winning the Top Alcohol National Championship. So uh, there is certainly a, a precedent there. We have seen three 540 second passes down that right-hand lane tonight. What has the Alutech funny car got in store right now? And Debbie do it from the left-hand lane. Up come the revs why we love funny cars. Early shoots for O'Rourke. 
Pilkin Pilkington will go down with a 569. Lane choice won't be going his way, but at least he's off to the semi-finals. Yeah, he's through to the semis. It was a fairly clean pass. A little bit of tire shape, shape at the top of first gear. But uh, other than that, not too many problems that you can see. Debbie O'Rourke, I'm not sure what happened there. The car got to about half track and the chutes came out. The butterflies closed. There's a lot of clutch dust in there, even a few sparks. So uh, that may tell the tale as to what happened. But that, that, that's a disappointing way for her to end her Western Nationals campaign. Shift light was on for a really long time too. I wonder if that might have been a shifting issue. She did look down in that direction. Here is your race ladder thanks to Snap-on Tools. Canuli will have Glasby in what could be a side-by-side -side 540. And on the other side of the tree, it's Gary Phillips taking on the local charger. It's the Crow Camps Pit Report here at the 44th Western Nationals. These two guys here pitted next to each other. Craig Lasby, John Canooley, and both can now say they've set new personal best. First to you, Craig. Nice job that was always coming, though. Thank you very much. We knew uh, that the first round was going to be tough with Aaron Deary. Um, I, I knew in the second round I was going to have my really good mate, John Canooley. Um, we have a good banter between us. We've had a uh, one all each in the last two Westerns. I beat him, he's beaten me. This is the, uh, unfortunately it's not the final, but we'll take whatever round. So it's best of three tonight and um, hopefully it's me. What about you, John? You know this guy pretty well and you're very fast at this track. Yeah, we're really consistent at this track and Craig's got that car really going fast. So hopefully we're going to take it out in this race and uh, this, uh, the semis and see if we can go straight to the final. Track is different to last night, it's fair to say? Yeah, it is. It is. It's come around and uh, that's why we've got some fast numbers out there tonight and I think we're going to go back it up and go a little bit faster again. You're not going to make it easy for it now, are you? Definitely not, mate. It's on. So top alcohol turning it on here at the West and that's in Perth. I wonder what top door slammer has in store for their first round. That is coming up next. Perth Motorplex. It's been around since the year 2000, but long before that reigned one event that all West Aussie drag racers wanted to win. The Western Nationals. Some of the best top door slammer racers from all around Australia have congregated to try and make the eight car field. But it's a West Aussie that they'll be chasing once again in 2015 as John Zapier tries to get his hands on another Andrew Gold Christmas tree. Chasing, oh, Fabiani blows the top off it. And as a result, Zapier gets the win. That's heartbreaking. Can he be beat or can he be stopped? Yeah, he's stopped with a bullet. That's about the only chance you got. John just, you know, he just thinks, sleeps, drag racing, you know. He's, and a credit to him, I mean, comes out here at the local meetings, and that's where we suffer. And anyone can be beaten on any given day. You have to qualify first, that's the main thing. If you qualify, it's any one race day. There's eight cars that are in the field and eight cars all can be beaten. One day, it's hard at the moment, every time we think we're making progress, he just keeps taking another step ahead, so it's good for WA, I guess. And of course he is, you know, like, we did it you know, again last last meeting, you know, we put a whole shot on him, he shook, he had to pedal it. If we didn't hurt the engine, we would have had him covered, no worries. The fastest, baddest sedans in Australia are here and they're ready to drop the hammer at the Perth Motorplex for the 44th running of the Western National. It just wouldn't be the Western Nationals at the Perth Motorplex without some door slammers. And we have a massive field oversubscribed trying to fit into eight cars on race day. Rusty Gregory alongside me. John Zapier, the man they're all chasing once again in 2015. Seven championships on the board. He's already leading the points coming into this round after one round of the championship. It's going to be tough for everybody else, but I tell you what, there's a whole host of uh, both Australia-wide races and locals looking to do the job here. The locals in door slammer, always tough at this track. That's how the points look after round number one. John Zapier, who went into the 560s, is on top of the points. So now it is time to unleash 3,000 plus horsepower of door slammers. Sedan based cars, they are seriously wild. We love seeing a race here at Perth. It's eliminations time. But before we get into the eliminations, we have had qualifying and 18 cars have been down this racetrack trying to sneak in to the eight car field. It was held over two days we had that many cars trying to qualify. 
And unfortunately, Stephen Aldridge, not one of the guys making it into the field, blowing the tyres off it severely. Yeah, strap in. This is going to be a busy, busy qualifying highlights because we've got so many cars. Pat Carboni over from Adelaide. 6.41 was his best. Unfortunately, didn't get into the field, but Peter Capiris on the other lane had a great run. He did make the field. We'll touch on him in a little while. Yeah, Carboni also knocking off the fuel line around that blower. Shane Catalano in the Studebaker. That car's had a rebuild in the last few years. A 6.49 would not be good enough to see Catalano make the top eight. 6.04 would be the eventual bump spot. This guy's in, but not number one. No, only good enough for second. He runs 5.89. Had a whole bunch of tyre shake just off the start line. That was his best run of qualifying. Bit of a surprise to see him anywhere but at the top of the time sheets, but I'm sure everybody else is pretty happy about it. So Matt Nolte, our pit reporter, likes his sunset. You get him thick and fast over this side of the country. A 6.42 for Ryan Moresby. The Donati Hot Shots team will miss out on race day. They'll be doing plenty of racing in the Statesman in uh, other categories over in the West. Now I've made that step up to door slammer. Here is a man who went to the final at the last round of the championship. Morris Fabietti cements his spot with a 5.92. Yeah, top half of the field for Fab. Good run. Good to see him being a little bit more resurgent this season as well. Really up there in the points, fighting hard for it. And here is your number one qualifier, Peter Kapiris. 5.87, absolutely brains the field. Pulls the front wheels up on the gear change too, I might add. And a 5.87, good enough for the number one spot. He has been to plenty of Western Nationals events in his time. A couple of local boys, Wayne Keyes is not in the field at this point. Needed the third qualifier to get there. Mighty Dak goes 5.97. And anything in the fives would be good enough to qualify in the field. Did have an entire five-second field at round number one at the Motorplex, though. Grand O'Rourke, pretty solid uh, pass here for him. A 6.06, but unfortunately, oh. just not enough to get into the field. He would be the first of our non-qualifiers. And a massive backfire through that supercharger, knocking out the first panels. Another big name not to qualify. Murray O'Connor, a guy who does a lot of running at the Perth Motorplex, has made plenty of door slammer fields, would not qualify. 6.23 is best and would miss out on race day. Owen Ducker now in this fantastic looking 37 Chevy. Will not make race day 7.33. First time we've ever seen him try to qualify for a door slammer field, so it's always good to see new cars coming in, but unfortunately he will not be starting on race day. Now the third session for qualifying was actually held early this morning, which is quite unusual for us. Paul Canuli, this is brother of John, had a nasty crash in the deep end at this racetrack a while ago. About a season ago, 6.61 in the heat of the day. Always difficult to qualify, but amazingly, a number of drivers actually made the field in this session. Including Mark Valeri, 5.94, great run for him. Not quite in the top half of the field, but number five is pretty close in a 5.90, very solid run. And look how dusty it is off the racing line in the braking area. So if you get out of the groove, you're in trouble and Chapman picking up the wheels. Really getting a handle on this car now, these guys. 6.14, yeah. again, right there or thereabouts. Doesn't quite make the field, but still very encouraging. Massive. Stuart Bishop, runner-up in the championship last year. Second non-qualifier in a row. Meanwhile, Wayne Keyes in the uh, Monaro gets his way in there with some big top-end speed in the five. Makes his second field of the year as well for Wayne Keyes. Pino Priolo does it again, gets in in the number eight spot. We've seen him over the last season just keep being there or thereabouts. He's always around that number eight qualifier, and he makes a field when a lot of guys didn't. Coming into this pass, Grant O'Rourke was on the bubble. Greg Arini needed to bring something out of the top draw, and he did. 5.92 would see him comfortably in race day. And as a matter of fact, it would be good enough to see him qualify in the top half of the field. So he'll take lane choice through to the elim uh, eliminations battle. But it's Peter Kapiris who takes out the number one qualifying spot. Congratulations to the Victorian on taking out yet another number one qualifying spot over here in the West. the Crow Camps pit report here at the Western Nationals. It was a marathon session in qualifying over two days. It was running hot conditions. The guy alongside me, Peter Kapiris, didn't even have to go out in that final round this morning because you're number one. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. It's, um, it's always good to be number one. Um, like I said earlier, we just sort of come here, played it safe. We, we know what, what this track can take. I mean, obviously, last meeting we were here, we are trying something different, which we shouldn't have. So we've just gone back to what we know. So, and which, which should run 80s all day. OK, it's time now for the 44th Western Nationals. Eliminations in Andrew Top Door Slammer. The boys are in the staging lanes getting ready. There is Morris Fabietti. 
Fellow New South Welshman is also getting ready, and he's down there with Matt Nolte. Well, we're just moments away from eliminations here at the 44th Western Nationals and qualifying held this morning due to a late night here at the Perth Motorplex. Some people think that qualifying session was going to be a non-event. This guy got in, Mark Baleri, right in the death knock. Well done. Thank you. No, it was good to get in. We're very happy, so um, hopefully we can go a little bit better and win first round. A bit of dark clouds around the area here. Hopefully we'll get the night in. Yeah, no, we should be right. Last time I came here, it rained just before the final, so hopefully we'll be right this time. Good, your old sparring partner behind you there, $500 richer once again in Morris Fabietti. Yeah, no, he's good. Good on him. He, he deserves it, so um, hopefully we'll see who wins this one. Well, they're giving the call-up signal. We'll let Mark Valeri jump in. It's going to be a massive night here, the 44th Western Nationals. He takes Morris Fabietti. All four matchups are going to be absolutely brutal here at the Perth Motorplex. Very true. Let's check out the snap-on. Andra Top Door Slammer, Ray Slatter, Peter Kapiris and Pino Priolo. Looking down that order, and that Fabietti Valeri matchup definitely stands out as our marquee matchup in round one. Absolutely. There's no easy runs in Top Door Slammer anymore. Doesn't matter where you qualify in the field. As long as you can get in, you're in with a shot to win. Loves to do burnouts. Big ones, smoky ones, and carry that car down towards half track. The crowd love it too. Mark Baleri, a former event winner here at the Motorplex. It was actually the Golden States, though, not the Western Nationals, running for Narrabeen Smash Repairs. He did beat John Zapier in a final. Can he repeat that kind of form, which nearly saw him go to a championship a few seasons ago? Indeed it did, and these guys really, really good mates off the track. In fact, it's at the point where Mark Baleri actually sometimes drives that car for, uh, for Morris Fabietti when Fab wants to see what's going on outside the car, because of course he makes the tuning calls on it as well. If he wants to see what's going on with the car, he puts Mark in it, sends him down the racetrack. These guys are really good mates. But as soon as they get out there on the drag strip, it just, something seems to click and they just want to beat each other. On board with our track starter. And that is a very responsible role right there. You need to make sure that all the cars are safe and ready to run. If there are any leaks, then it's the starter who has the final call. And as a driver, you have to obey whatever the starter says. Group here into Morris Fabietti as we go on top of the Christmas tree. What a great shot. A fabulous five for Morris Fabietti, a 590. He claps his hands. He's happy with that one. He's going to tonight's semi-finals at the Perth Motorplex. After a couple of years out in the wilderness, I know how good that would feel for Morris Fabietti. Tough break for Mark Valeri. It looks like the thing just sort of laboured off the start line, never really got up on the tyre. But still, fabulous Fabietti goes right through to the finish line. Watch the roof deflection here as he goes across the finish line. You can see it start to vibrate, and then right at the finish line, it just buckles. That thing is moving around a lot. Gives you an idea of just how fast these cars are going. So cool seeing that man happy once again in a door slammer. The reigning Western Nationals champion, Daniel Gregory. Season four by going to the final at the Winter Nationals. Couldn't win Australia's biggest drag race, but has won the biggest in the West. Marty Dak, been racing for a couple of years now in Top Door Slammer, doing a great job. Matt Nolte caught up with him earlier. Um, driving a Door Slammer would have to be um, a great achievement, uh, moving into this great sport of drag racing. Um, with uh, my family, that's an awesome achievement. But um, a five-second pass was one of the, well, the best sort of achievement in drag racing. Um, so, yeah, um, our business, our life, uh, all the sort of things that keep all this going. And, yeah, my wonderful family, they back me up. My crew, they're, they're great people too. He also knows what it's like to lose big finals. He lost the final of the Nationals. And uh, he also knows what it's like to lose that supercharger been an ongoing problem in this Ford. Hopefully he's got that fixed against Gregorini. Oh, Dak completely misses the start. And he's just never going to come back from there. Gregorini hoses him at both ends and a whole shot win. 5.95 beats the 5.94. Gregorini gets the job done with his hands and feet. Gregorini wasn't particularly good on the tree. He, had been, he was a whole bunch better than Marty Dak. I'm not sure what happened there, whether it was just the start line proceeding that got to him, but Marty Dak a day and a half late. Gregorini on his way to the semis. Marty Dak's no pro stock racer when it comes to reaction times, but he's definitely not that bad. That Something's gone wrong there for Marty. 
for that to uh, be three tenths down. Hard to say whether it even got up on the revs coming into stage. So just an unusual circumstance there. But we move on to a guy who is a local favourite, let's be honest. Wayne Keyes running on uh, well, with a different type of engine combination to the rest of the door. Slamers runs a root style supercharger. Ran some very, very quick times at the event. The first round of the championship here at uh, here in Perth just a couple of weeks ago. But he's got a big task here. He's up against the seven-time reigning national champion, John Zappia, number two qualifier in this field. This is going to be a good one. Saw a quick shot of Jess Zappia doing the reverse gear work. John Zappia's daughter. She was lucky enough to meet the tallest AFL footballer this weekend who's here, Aaron Sanderland. Tallest ever to play in the AFL. It's AFL. He was ducking his head under one of those uh, massive light powers over there, Rusty. I'll teach you a bit more about the rules of AFL later. This is Zapia versus Keys, round one of the Western Nats. Oh, Keys all over the place. And Zapia lays one down. It's a 586. And he is in the zone and in the 580s. Zapia was first off the start line as well, which is not something that he's had to do very often over the last couple of years. He certainly got it that time. Not sure what happened with Wayne Keyes. That car was just porpoising around it. Wasn't behaving itself whatsoever. And John Zapier through to another semi-final, another round win, and potentially another final round of the Western Nats. Maybe he's still got the semis to go yet. And high five all around. Pino Priolo comes out. Just noticing that a lot of drivers picking this right-hand lane. Every driver so far with lane choice taking that right-hand lane, including our number one qualifier. Hey, guys getting themselves up on that giant screen. And I've seen giant screens before. This one takes the cake here at the Perth Motorplex. Very unusual that drivers would take the right-hand lane in the first round of eliminations here. Usually it's always the left. Usually, but obviously they're seeing something in the racetrack here. The crew chiefs always have a good look at these things before they send their drivers out. And it seems to be the case that there is something in that right lane that they're liking here this weekend. Aaron Deary racing in top alcohol this weekend. I wonder if that's going to detract from this team get down the racetrack. Well, you've got to think they've already made the field in a very, very tough field. 18 cars trying to qualify for this door slammer field for an eight-car spot. He got into the eighth spot. He takes on the number one qualifier, which I think he would be pretty happy about, Pino Priol, that it's not John Zappia. Mike Brew, who does the tuning for Peter Kakiris. These guys are fast, but they're not full of proof. No, it's a case of really throw it down the racetrack, give it everything it's got, and if it sticks, it sticks. We'll see what happens on board with your starter. Strong pass, Kapiris. 592. The numbers not quite backing up just how good that looked and sounded. It looked pretty clean. It didn't look like he had to pedal it too much. Pino Priolo just went straight up in tyre smoke, which we've seen a couple of times this weekend over in that left-hand lane. But Peter Kapiris, he got the whole shot on the Christmas tree, kept that pedal absolutely flat to the floor all the way through the finish line. Just a good solid run, good conservative run from those guys. Their reward will be taking on Daniel Gregorini in the semi-finals. Our other semi-final matchup will see John Zapia taking on the New South Welshman Morris Fabietti. That's a good matchup. One and two on the points. That's your snap on race ladder. Well, it's all smiles down here. The girls are happy, and Daniel Gregorini's even happier down here because he's going to take on John Zapia for the third time. Last time was the Winter Nationals, but this car is getting better and better. Yeah, we're getting more consistent. Um, we just try and step up a little bit, keep up with the track conditions, and you never know what happens. You know, we caught Marty out having a snooze on the reaction time last lap, so hopefully we can do the same this one. Looks like the cars come out of the wilderness now. You haven't had those dramas that we saw plague you last year. Yeah, no, we run uh, four, five, 90 laps in a row, so it's very consistent, and sometimes the name of the game is to be consistent and go rounds. So we are set for the semi-finals of Top Door Slammer and Top Alcohol. The 44th running of the Western Nationals at the Perth Motorplex. Stick with us. Top 
alcohol semi-finals after a blistering first round of racing. We were just dumbfounded at the numbers that we saw. And the sky's the limit now, Rusty, really. And this is going to be the quick session as well. The, the first round of racing was the one that we thought might be OK, but this one, the semi-finals, is going to be really good. So it's Glasby and Canuli and Phillips and Tilkington, but it's really that first semi-final matchup that I think has potential for uh, maybe some side-by-side -side 540s. We've never seen that before. Who knows what we've got in store tonight. It's not that often that we've seen side-by-side -side 550s, let's, let's be honest. We saw it in qualifying here today, but Craig Glasby, this is the man in the box seat at the moment. 5.45 in the first round. A couple of stout burnouts to kick things off. Canelli went via Anthony Begley and ran that nice 5.49 second pass. And for this guy, he's just creeping up, creeping up, and then took a giant step into the portal. Yeah, they did. Huge, huge step. Big personal best as well. Knocking on the door of that national record territory. Of course, we saw Gary Phillips go 5.44 as well. The question is, just how quick can these guys go? We know they're making horsepower. We know the track's there. Will we, A, see a side-by-side -side 5.40? That's the question that I want to know. And, B, will we see a new national record here tonight? Having Gower there to crew chief and make the calls on that Glasby car as a tuner has been a big step in the right direction. the win he's going to the final and a 541 wow 428 kilometers per hour and that isn't just under the national record it's under the world record quickest alcohol funny car pass in the world in the history of the world <laughs> this is incredible from a small team from western australia to run these types of times this is just incredible and not to mention the fact that he's still got one more run to go this evening in the final round he's on his way to the final he's celebrating that's just impressive not to mention the fact that he went the long way down the center line everyone would have assumed that it would have been the Lucas Oil Products funny car that would be there first to break that world record for my one thousandth of a second. It goes to the Gower tune car. Might add that it was Gower who was the man who got Alan Dobson into the fives all those years ago, 20 years ago. A long, long time ago. We've got another all funny car battle now in semi-final number two. Gary Phillips racing for Lucas Oil Products, knock out Rob Ambrosi in the first round of racing, the Victorian. And uh, well, he's looking for national records this weekend, but he's also got one eye on the championship as well. He's a 17-time national champion. He missed out by the barest of margins last year, so he knows that every single round win, every bonus point you can get below ET, resetting the national record, he wants them. He wants another championship. The other thing to think about here, we've just seen a 541 under that world record by Frank Manzo. We've got an NHRA driver tuning this weekend with Gary Phillips as well in Steve Harker. So the potential to maybe even get under that 541, dare I say get into the 30s, possible. Not to mention the reigning NHRA top alcohol <laughs> funny car champion. This is set up beautifully. Can Gary Phillips not only win the race, but get back that world record of claim it for his own? It's quick. The time. Oh, 5.43. He misses it by a couple hundredths, and that is a blistering pass, though. But what a final round this sets up for us. Only two hundredths of a second in it. That car is so well set up at the moment. Just carries the front wheels ever so slightly. Moved around a little bit at half track, but still a 5.43. It's a personal best for Gary Phillips. Can he go quicker in the final round? Incredible. So it's Glasby versus Phillips, the two quickest funny cars in the country, just about in the world. And they are going to square off in the final of the 44th Western Nationals. What a way to introduce top alcohol into the Western Nats. Well, part two of this mini series between Craig Glasby and John Canulli continues. You, my friend Craig Glasby, are 541. I know, it, and that was hellish. The only thing it means, but is we, instead of making it a best out of three, I think we'll go for a best out of six or seven. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, John? Hell of a race. Oh, it was. It was a good race. Um, mate. Kirsten, good idea. <laughs> 
Mate, he had to run national record. Congratulations to him and the team. They've done an awesome job this weekend. They've actually come a long way as well in the last few months. And, mate, I'm proud of the guys. And hopefully we can go do some racing together this year. Time to flick our mind back over to the other category here this weekend. Door slam almost in the shadows, believe it or not, given the fact that these guys are usually the premium blower category. We're building a bit of alcohol versus door slam rivalry, maybe. I think it'd be healthy. But either way, it's a, a big matchup, this one. Peter Kapiris, former national champion over a decade ago, and uh, the man alongside him, a man, you'd have to say almost the best door slammer we've ever seen to never have won the title. That's a big call. Very, very big call. He'd definitely be up there, but I'll tell you what, top door slammer and top alcohol really had contrasting fortunes this weekend. The door slammer guys have struggled a little bit. They've been turning the tyres, shaking the tyres, nobody really getting down the track all that cleanly, whereas the top alcohol guys are going out and laying down world record quali quality runs. Uh, so it's really contrasting fortunes. That being said, the door slammer semi-finals are about as good a race as you are going to see. Uh, Morris Fabietti, resurgent after the last couple of seasons out in the wilderness. Great to see him back, taking on Peter Kapiris, a guy who has been there or thereabouts for probably 20 years on top door, in top door slammer. That's why we call them door slammers. The doors are operational, and in some cases, we need to keep them shut with a bit of tape. Anything that'll work. These things are brutal, organic race cars. That's why we love them. It's not Formula One. It's louder. It's meaner. It's faster. It's faster. Got a very experienced lineup right now. Oh, Fabietti has lost this one on the tree. He's never going to make that back. Kapiris, will it be a whole shot win? It is. What on earth happened to Morris Fabietti on the start line? 582. That'd be pretty close to a personal best, I would think, for Morris Fabietti. But he just gave up a bunch on the starting line. Gave an absolute day and a half. He looked set, his revs were up. Yeah, he looked ready to go, but Peter Kapiris, you can't give him that kind of a head start and hope to drive around him. It's just not going to happen in a quality field like this. What a bizarre race. PK goes uh, through to the final on the back of the upper forward, a mistake. Unfor Man. Unforced error. We are in yeah. tennis season. An unforced error from... Uh, Morris Fabietti, man oh man, incredible. And will that put a nail in the coffin of his championship? We're running on the shortened season. There's only so many rounds out there to make up. He was already down a little bit to John Zapier in the points. And well, can uh, Daniel Gregorini help out Morris Fabietti here? Or will Zap stretch out that lead? Zapier's last 20 races in the Door Slammer Championship. 18 wins, two losses. Damn it. Incredible. It's, it's just incredible. The streak that these guys have been on for the last, you know, seven years, even eight years old, close enough the year before that. They're now standing alone as the most successful top door slammer team we've ever seen in this country. They've overtaken the accomplishments of Victor Bray. And when you can say that, you know that you've done a pretty good job. If Victor is the godfather of door slammer. I wonder what that makes John Zapier. to the Western Nationals final with a 77, low ET. And what a time to bring out a big pass like that. Interesting, very, very interesting because John Zapier will have lane choice for the final round. But remember, PK already ran in the other lane in the semi-final. It was almost as if it was meant to be. It's going to be a great final round. And John Zapier, 577. When everyone else is struggling, he still manages to get down that racetrack. And there it is, two of the fastest and quickest guys we have in Door Slammer. And it's John Zappier with lane choice. He'll probably take that right-hand lane. I mean, to be steering it out of the mirror. He uses a mirror in that car on that A-pillar. And he will have Peter Kapiris. That is the snap-on race ladder. Big final still to come. Peter Kapiris, whole shot win, 588 to a 582. You're on your way to a final. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, wow, I hate beating Morris. I swear to God, he's, he's the only bloke in this whole competition. I do not want to race. I'm shattered. 
hoping someone's going to win. I prefer it to be me, but yeah, I hate beating Morris. I swear to God, he's such a nice guy. But yeah, no, look, I'm wrapping. I'm going to a fighter. Woo! It's good. It's time to hand out some Christmas trees. That's the trophies that we have in Andrew Drag Racing. And this is a gold Christmas tree, as it is one of our big national events, the Western Nationals. And this is just such a juicy matchup. What? This is incredible. This is a, probably the most anticipated top alcohol race I think we've ever seen in this country for a long, long time. I mean, we go back to the national, Steve Ham having to win that semi-final round in Sydney to win the championship. But this, from purely from a pure drag racing point of view, this is what it's about. It's about low ET, quick numbers. And you can see on that board there, Craig Glasby has got Gary Phillips by a nose at this stage. But potentially, we could see the quickest side-by-side -side top alcohol pass we've ever seen in this country. It shows you one thing, and that's for sure, that Glasby and Phillips are the two quickest. And now we have them on the racetrack. This guy has thrown in the 5.30 tuner for this pass. He tunes his own car with the help of his family and also Steve Parker, who's here this weekend. And now is the time for them to step it up and run that 5.30 and take the world record from this guy. This could not be set up any better. Are the conditions still there? It's cooler than it was earlier. Will the track hold that kind of horsepower and uh, that kind of clutch setting? I can tell you, these guys will be absolutely on it at the start line. They don't want to give up an inch. Don't forget reaction times. Oh, they're both slow at the tree. Lasby's all over the place. Phillips will take the win. Will he get the ET to back it up? Oh, my goodness. Lay that one in the top five for the quickest ever. But it's not the quickest ever. He does take another gold Christmas tree to add to the forest. And that is another win. Very, very happy Debbie Phillips there. And Steve Harker, the reigning NHRA Top Alcohol Funny Car champion with a very wry smile. Been friends with Gary Phillips for a long, long time. And Craig Glasby, he threw everything at it, picked the front wheels up, carried it over towards the wall, and that was it. All it took for Gary Phillips to run through and take the points lead at the opening round. Here comes the trophy. Gary Phillips has got a whole museum of these now. You're the winner of the first round of the championship. Are we happy, Vegemite? Say, I'm Good off your mate. Good, awesome. good, <laughs> good stuff. Hey, Perth Motorplex, absolutely fantastic. I told you they'd be happy. Hey, we were ready. We were ready in the final. <laughs> so, yes, this will like, go really good on the collection. <laughs> Here comes the crew. We're going to have a good time tonight. Glasby might not have won the round, but he has won some fans and he's also written some headlines around the world. Congratulations to him, but well done, Gary Phillips, on another win over here in the West, and he takes 113 points back over the East Coast. Wow, a very emotional and happy Gary Phillips in the deep end. More than we used to seeing from him. What? Peter Kapiris to finish his burnout. It's not like him to get that emotional about a race win. He is fired up. I guess now he thinks that there is a man definitely worthy of beating in the championship. Here we go. We are now in the top door slammer final, checking out where the low ETs for these guys sit. Zapier said it in qualifying at the last pass. He's also backed that up tonight with another quick 570. Yeah, John Zappi and Peter Kapira, so seem to be the names on that board. Morris Fabietti got a couple of quick ones in there as well, but uh, really, you can't go past John Zappier. If you're looking for a favourite in this race, you'd have to be on board with the Fuchs Monaro. But I tell you what, Peter Kapiris, on his day, if he can get all the planets aligned, all the stars aligned, he will get this thing down the track and he will give John Zappier a good race. We are in whole shot territory. That is where you win the race with the better reaction time, but a slower ET. We've already seen a whole shot today in the semi-final with Peter Kapiris. We know if there's one chink in the armor, it's John Zappier's reaction time, especially when he's in the right-hand lane. Historically, they're worse. Mark brew has been tuning this thing beautifully all weekend. Needs to get the perfect time at both the start and the finish to see if he can win the Western Nats. the first box. This one's going to the strike. Zapier, just 5.78. He needed every bit of that ET to get around PK. Seven thousandths of a second at the strike. 
That is one of the best door slammer races we've ever seen, if not the best. What a race. These guys have gone toe to toe many, many times before, but I don't think we've ever seen them in a race quite like this. So close to the wall for Peter Capiris. John Zapier, you never saw him on the onboard. You were never in front or behind. Just an incredible side-by-side -side race. You can't pick it at the finish line. Well, the Western Nationals always proves an amazing event. John Zapier, 80 centimetres. I know that's a lot for you in those terms of 78 to win. Oh, awesome. Uh, look, we finally, we, well, we made two back-to-back -back passes, but they were both pedalled, so it was a back-to-back -back pedal. But um, the Fook Striker Monaro's have been running well for a few meetings now. Well, it's been running well for seven years, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, we, you know, we're still leading the points. Um, you know, Pete took Fabi Eddie out, who was second in the points. It was close to me, so it was a perfect scenario for us to, to get a bit of a lead. What do I say? We, we're going to Adelaide. <laughs> What a time to pull out the fastest and quickest, I should say, side-by-side -side door slammer pass in history. In the final of the Western Nats, and now John Zapier has already a fairly commanding lead in the championship. But really, tonight has just been an amazing night in terms of numbers. Incredible. I mean, we've seen a new top alcohol funny car world record with a 541 from Craig Glasby. We've seen the quickest side-by-side -side top door slammer race in history. The final round decided by only 7 thousandths of a second. I'm not even sure which one I put at number one. Just an incredible race across the board. Thank you very much, Rusty. We know one thing, 2015 has already been a big year for the Andra Drag Racing Championship. We'll see you at the next round. Coming up after the break, we wind back to the 2018 edition of the Garrett International Drifting Cup from Sydney Motorsport Park.